Hello, I am Carl Benedict, the Director of Research Data Services in the College of University Libraries and Learning Sciences at the University of New Mexico. And I'm here today to talk about vector geospatial data. In this presentation, I'm going to start with a brief discussion of the common types of vector geometry types and how, how they are built then go through a discussion of the various um, linkages between those geometry types and the attributes that can be used in conjunction with those geometry types to visualize those geometries based on the attributes that are linked to them, but then can also be used to select or filter those geometries for display in analysis or visualization tools. Starting with the vector data types, the core concept is one of features, where features are made up of one or more two or three dimensional points, often referred to as nodes, where in the case of two dimensional points, those would typically be an X and a Y coordinate, and those may be, say, in latitude and longitude, or they may be in another coordinate system like the Universal Transverse Mercator system or any number of, of different pro, uh, map projections. Those coordinates may even be arbitrary Cartesian XY coordinates. The key is that they are basically defining a location in space in the X and Y dimensions. Three-dimensional points add a third dimension of height or elevation um, in addition to the X and Y coordinates. Some data models support 3D points and some don't, but this is something that um, you may encounter in some data sets that you're working with. So with this core concept of these uh, individual points or nodes, we can then start to build a core set of feature types, starting, of course, with points themselves that are those XY or XYZ coordinates with an associated set of attributes. We can also build a composite feature type, such as a line that includes a set of points that are in a specific order and are linked to each other to create essentially a linear feature. And finally, we can build polygons, which again are collections of a series of points, but in this case, that series is understood to also um, provide a closed polygon or, in, or an enclosed region. So um, while the, the uh, structure of a line or polygon may be similar in being constituted of multiple points or nodes, the difference is that polygons are closed areas where lines are essentially collections of points that uh, provide an unclosed linear feature. A key characteristic of these geometries within a vector data set, though, is that there are also attributes that are associated with each one of those features that really provide the power of the vector data model to be able to use these data analytically or for visualization. With the concept of attributes attached to geometries, we start to see a linkage with the common data types that you will often see in database systems, where the, um, the attributes that are linked to geometries are often defined in common data types such as text strings, integer values, decimal or float floating point values, date and date, date time values, um, and other commonly used uh, database uh, values. With this underlying structure and approach for defining the content of, of an attribute table that is linked to the features, um, these uh, attributes are often viewed in a tabular form as illustrated here, as this is an illustration from um, a data set from the Snowtel network representing a time series of measurements of 
in this case uh, weather and snow data sets for a particular geographic location. You will notice in the attribute table that we are not seeing the actual um, latitude, longitude, or other coordinate information for these uh, observations. In this case, um, we are only view viewing the attributes. If you're viewing this in a geographic information system or other geospatially enabled um, platform like a, um, a, a geospatially enabled database, um, you may actually see the attributes here and the geometries may be viewed in another interface such as a map or, um, or a preview window. But you can see here that each of these columns represents um, a consistent type of data and you can infer from what you're seeing in the columns what those data types might be. Where the site IDs appear to be integers, the date and time fields appear to be exactly that, date fields or time fields that have a specific representation of those types of data. And the remaining columns appear to be decimal or floating point values, representing measurements that are observed at each one of those dates and times for the specified site location represented by the ID. So to dig a little deeper into this linkage with tabular data, um, we can see this very clear alignment of the uh, our general conception of what tabular data look like with the addition of the representation of a geometry, a point line or polygon, in addition to the associated attributes. And this leads us to um, an ability to, in many cases, develop new vector data sets based on the contents of a tabular data source, like a comma separated value file or a spreadsheet and you can do this can be done through a, a variety of, of approaches um, one commonly used one is called geocoding where you might have a tabular data set that increase that includes street addresses and there are a number of services out there um, included in some desktop GIS applications or available as web services such as uh, Google's Google Maps geocoding application programming interface where those street addresses can actually be converted into corresponding XY coordinates. In some cases you may have an existing database of place names and their corresponding XY coordinate locations such as the geographic names information system from that is maintained by the US Geological Survey. If you have place names in your database or your tabular data and you have a reference database that has those matching place names and their coordinates you can use a common um, essentially linkage or join model between those two tables to assign to link those geographic locations to the corresponding place names in your tabular data. Finally, in some tabular data sets, you may actually have the location data already encoded into those tables, um, such as having latitude and longitude values in columns in the table. Most geographic information systems can um, automatically recognize those latitude and longitude columns and even if they can't recognize them automatically you can specify what columns contain latitude and longitude values and they can then um, streamline the process of treating those as geospatial um, geometry uh, point information and use those in mapping applications. That also then streamlines the process of exporting those data as explicitly geospatial data formats such as um, ESRI's um, shapefile format or GeoJSON or GML, some commonly used formats for exchanging vector data sets. One of the other powers of this tabular data model is that a number of database platforms and systems have now been extended to be able to efficiently store the geometry data and their associated attributes within their database system. This brings all of the power that you have available to you in a geo data or in a database 
um, to bear in terms of being able to manage those geospatial data and treat them with all of the tools that you have available in the database. You also will typically have an additional set of functions within that database that allow you to do very sophisticated spatial querying and spatial processing um, against those geometries that are now a first class data type within those databases. In summary, vector data consist of geometries that are composed of one or more points, whether they're two or three-dimensional points, that, pr that are uh, nodes that are defined, that are used to define common geometry types such as points, lines, or polygons. For each one of those feature types, you can link attributes to each feature that allow you to do such things as uh, differential symbolization or selecting uh, features based on their attributes for use analytically or in visualization. The underlying attribute information is often represented in a tabular form and can actually um, uh, be derived from the contents of tables to create new vector data sets. And finally, the concept of a geospatially enabled database is one where you can store the geometries and their associated attributes within a standard database system that has an understanding of the geometry types and specialized functions for working with those geometry types as first class data types within the database, extending the traditional database model beyond the traditional strings, numeric data, date time, and other standard data types.